Okay, I think we're gonna get started. Uh, thank you all for starting off your Monday with us. Uh, my name is Kara Savitt. I am the Scientific Affairs Officer at the Embassy of Israel in Washington, DC. And I am pleased to welcome you all to our sustainably, uh, Sustainability in Fashion webinar featuring Israeli designer Meyerik of Marai 1998, and American designer Ariel Crawford of Ariel. Uh, Daria Andronescu of Wonder Wardrobe will be our wonderful moderator for today's event. And fast fashion is one of the leading contributors to devastating environmental damage. Our participants today seek to change this narrative by designing and promoting fashion clothing that is made and sourced sustainably. Both designers utilize innovative technology in order to create pieces that marry style and sophistication without destructive environmental impact. As a part of the embassy's Green Embassy Initiative, we seek to highlight both American and Israeli companies and individuals who are taking an active role in reversing the harmful effects of climate change. We hope you enjoy today's event. I'd now like to turn it over to Daria Andronescu, the owner and author of Wonder Wardrobe, an online video course that has educated thousands of viewers on how to reduce waste and support sustainable fashion brands. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much for such a nice introduction. And that is true. Uh, basically, my job is to teach women how to dress like conscious adults. <laughs> and what does it mean, actually? Let me tell you a story. So I've been working as a personal stylist for over 10 years now. And my job was actually quite interesting because it consists of two parts. I go to my clients' homes and analyze their wardrobes so I can see what they've been buying all this time, what are they actually wearing to help them uh, create new outfits, and then also understand what is missing in their wardrobes. And then, of course, we go shopping together and I help them find new clothes that would go well with what they already have. And you know, once I had a client, her name was Maria. I went to her home to help her with her wardrobe. And um, we've analyzed everything, every single item. And uh, in the end, we had a huge pile of clothes that she said she doesn't want to wear anymore. She just wants to get rid of it. And that was shocking at, uh, at that time. But then working more and more as a personal stylist, I understood that everyone does it. Everyone at some point collect a pile of clothes that they don't want to wear anymore, that they bought for some wrong reasons, maybe out of boredom, they bought it on impulse, they didn't think what they're going to wear it with, and there are a lot of reasons, basically. But unfortunately, this, of course, creates a huge fashion waste, yeah? Because most of the clothes at the moment that we can see in stores are made out of unsustainable materials that most of the times can't um, be recycled, they are not biodegradable, and of course, they end up in the landfills or being burned. Yeah, so this is not good for our planet at all. And uh, I've decided to do something about it. So I've collected my uh, professional experience and um, created a method that allows women to um, build a wardrobe that is beautiful, versatile, very unique to them. And also that includes only clothes that they enjoy wearing and uh, that doesn't include any random items that are being thrown away in the end. And I've created an online course to take it further so more women around the world can take this method and apply to their wardrobe step by step and eventually end up with a very interesting and sustainable wardrobe. So that's my story, but that's not the end because Wonder Wardrobe uh, is an educational platform, but also we have um, a rental service because I'm a true believer that rental 
uh, rentals is a future of fashion and we need to create circular fashion as soon as possible so people can enjoy clothing and create less waste. So that's about me. Now let me introduce you to our designers that we'll be talking to. Uh, Ariel Crawford from of Ariel is a sustainable apparel label committed to organic, recycled and zero waste fabrics, local manufacturing, fair trade supply chain and plastic free packaging and production. Ariel launched her brands in 2018 after a decade of experience in the fashion industry, including design roles with Rachel Comey and Madonna. And yes, everyone say hello to Ariel. Yes, and now we have Maya Reik. Marine 1998 is a ready-to-wear and accessories label from, for the new era, focusing on feminine, sophisticated silhouettes with impeccable details and eco-conscious materials like recycled nylon, vegan leather, velvet, and fofer. The house offers a signature take on enduring elegance. Everyone, please welcome Maya. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, how is everyone doing today? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, sorry. Me? Now, now, now I can hear you. Okay, I perfect. can hear you. Okay, great. I think um, we're ready to start. Uh, we have already 54 participants watching us. So let's um, uh, start with the more obvious question. <laughs> um, what inspired you to start your own label? Let's start with Maya. What inspired you to start your own label? For me, it really, it was something very personal, I would say, um, because I always knew I wanted to do fashion um, from a very, very young age. And it was kind of that instinct and a feeling that I can do it and that I want to do it. And it's, it's kind of cliche to say, but it was my biggest dream. So for me, it, it was always about when, not, not how. It was, I was just waiting to be, in a way, old enough to start doing and um, to start launching my own brand. So, yeah, I was just, it was my passion, my biggest passion till now. And uh, as much as I know, you started um, when you were 17, right? Yes. I was 17 when we officially launched Marais 1998. And the behind the scenes process was way before because there was a lot of inside work of what are we going to present? What do I want to show? Who is the woman of Marais? Um, so I started, I think of, I started working on the brand when I was really like around 15, 16, but 17 was the first collection that we launched in Milan, Fashion Week. And then it all started. Very nice. And very impressive, yeah. I have to say. You have to be very brave to start at such a young age and go to Milano Fashion Week and everything, you know. It's yes, thank you. Hard. Thank you. What about you, Ariel? What uh, inspired you to start your own label? Um, well, I started sewing when I was pretty young. I was raised in West Texas in a very resourceful way. Um, I was taught to make my own clothes and hunt my own food and grow my own food from a pretty early age. And so these were all just things in my tool belt. And to be honest, I didn't even know that being a fashion designer was a career um, until mm -hmm. I graduated college. And I was like, oh, shit, I'd, all I want to do is make clothes. So I put myself back in school and fashion school. Um, and went through the motions there, although I'm largely self-taught. 
And then I, I moved to New York eventually and sort of, um, you know, climbed the corporate ladder of fashion until I got to this point where the dream became a nightmare. Um, and I just realized the ethics and the ethos of the industry were very out of line with my values. And so from there, I, I quit my job. I was at Alexander Wang in menswear design at the time. And I went down to the jungles of South America and I stayed there for a while where I was learning about regenerative craft with indigenous communities, um, how to weave, how to dye, how to bead. Um, and I had no intention really of coming back to the fashion industry, but then it sort of dawned on me, like we have a lot of work to do in this industry and this is my medium. So I wanna be a part of the, inevitably the fashion revolution. And so in 2018, I launched my own label with these core values of organic and recycled and byproduct materials. And um, I've been a zero waster for quite a few years now. And so I apply those values to my, to my brand as well. That's a, another really big pillar for us is uh, reducing waste. That's also impressive, I have to say, because not so many designers even consider zero waste techniques at the time. Although, of course, already so many ways are developed yeah, to, to make clothes in this way. Yeah, but not everyone kind of like considering as a serious option, I guess. Nice. And um, what, um, where do you uh, seek inspiration for your designs? Because you both have very different labels, yeah, and very different aesthetics. So it's very interesting. Um, where do you both uh, seek inspiration and how do you get to uh, this beautiful uh, clothing that is not only just uh, sustainable, because sometimes people have this attitude that sustainable fashion is such a, like, something very simple very basic maybe but both of you create beautiful beautiful clothes and i would love to hear where this inspiration let's start with ariel sure thanks um well living in new york certainly continues to inspire me just being on the streets here is is a constant inspiration um and there's something very pragmatic about uh, my line and I also really garner inspiration from New York for that. Like it's really for the working woman. We have work to do. And it's so, it's like, we need clothes to, to work in, but to also feel special in. Um, I'm very inspired by skincare, uh, like textiles as skincare. How can we use linings and things. I, I love to put the most beautiful and expensive fabric actually on the inside of my garments because it's what's touching our skin all day. And it's, for me, it feels like empowerment. It's this reminder to myself every day of my inherent self-worth and that, you know, I, I, that I am of the world and that I, I want to, yeah, just like keep everything very special from the inside out. Um, and so, other things that inspire me, definitely my upbringings in West Texas. I often like to use that dichotomy of what works in the city and the desert um, and sort of finding that intersection of in between and, and things like timelessness and seasonless and where could you go anywhere in the world. I really consider my clothes, my clothes to be a canvas for you. Um, I, don't, I do a lot of non-colors, so I encourage people to style it however, however you may. Um, my, my motto is simple clothes for colorful people. I really think that um, if you sort of lean towards minimalism in your wardrobe and then go maximalist on the details, you're much more likely to have those pieces for long periods of time um, because it's just something that you don't get tired of and that you can continue to connect with for, for many years. It's very interesting and I like uh, that you pay so much attention to uh, the touch of the fabric yeah so it feels very nice on your skin and i also always tell my students that it's very important that we have to um, listen to our senses because we are sensible people yeah and uh, we not only need to decide on what to wear with our eyes but also how it feels on your skin um yeah the sound of the clothes because sometimes we get uh, some beautiful pieces yeah they might be visually nice but if you can't sit in it if it's not comfortable if it's itchy it's not something that you will wear for a very long time yeah so this all components 
I think very important and I'm, I'm glad to hear that you pay so much attention to this. It's very interesting. Okay, Maya, what about you? Where um, do you find the uh, inspiration for your, for your de designs? I think the biggest inspiration for my designs from day one of the brand is to create something very timeless and classic, which for me, the meaning of timeless is to create a piece that will, the thought behind it is that you can pass it to your daughter and to generations. So to create a classic piece that will just go with you forever and you can wear it to work in the morning and you can wear it in the evening and you can just go with it for years and years. And actually my grandma, um, who is turning 90 this month is kind of that inspiration. She taught me that without me knowing that for a long time, but the way she, the way she looks at clothes is she has the same clothes in her closet from 40 years ago. And she just gave me this beautiful t-shirt with a small rose on it. And the thought of the, the thought of the idea that she bought it 40 years ago in Europe and now me and my sister kind of wear it a lot. That's, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's where my thought is when I create a new piece is that it's really something that can pass a generation and can be useful for many different events, not just a party or not just one occasion. It can be something that you wear and used many times and obviously also part of that is for inspiration is the fabric we use and the quality and nature so yeah very nice and uh, for some people that haven't seen your store maybe yet uh, you were mostly specializing on fur, fur coats right yes correct yeah, that's very interesting because, uh, of course, I think it's kind of unmodern, not very modern to, to wear real first anymore, of course, but what you do, I, I really like because, uh, the elegance, you know, the classic uh, fur coat, you can't take it away and it's something that is definitely going to stay with us for a very long time and it's a it's a treat yeah that you get for yourself and keep it and I believe that yes you can pass away to your uh, daughters and it's a nice nice thing to have very interesting all right thank you, thank you. let's move on <laughs> I would also uh, like to ask you about the materials then if we continue on your codes yeah Maya so what uh, do you use to create your codes what kind so, of yes so we used the last collection we started using also recycled nylon which is a new sorry there's a plane over me one second um, we use recycled nylon, we use recycled polyester, and we work with vegan leather, faux fur, and velvets, and we kind of use the same fabrics in many, many different ways. So mm -hmm. for example, we'll find this beautiful faux fur fabric and we will use the leftovers of the production for the bags, and we'll kind of, the creative and agenda is to have to use the fabric in a very smart way and not, um, not to waste any fabric, to make a really smart decision of how to cut it, how to sew it. And yeah, th this is the main fabric we work with. Um, when we started Marais, we worked with many different kinds of fabrics and more options but I decided from the second collection to minimize it and to really focus 
on few fabrics and to create kind of a whole world just from them. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And what about you, Ariel? What kind of interesting fabrics do you use? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm very textile centric. I definitely start with the textiles first. Um, I love to work with domestic fabrics. I use a lot of um, American organic merinos. Um, being from Texas, I use a lot of their GOTS certified organic cottons. Um, and then I love to get innovative with materials as well. My signature fabric is a milk, it's called milk fabric, and it's made from 100% milk, which is a byproduct of the dairy industry. They take runoff from organic dairy farms and ferment it and spin it into a fiber. So it's a protein fiber, it's able to bind to itself um, and it requires no additional water, chemicals or dyes. So it's a completely zero waste fabric. Um, I also use a cactus leather uh, that's produced in a similar way that's a byproduct of agriculture. Um, and then I use a lot of recycled materials as well, recycled wools, recycled. Um, I, I really try to veer away from synthetics, but given that we're very accustomed to synthetics, like if I'm going to make a yoga legging, I've done one out of merino as well. But, um, you know, people, we're addicted to stretch. And so I don't see that going anywhere. And so there's a sort of leaning in that has to happen there. Um, and so I do use some reprieve, which is recycled poly. Um, and again, going back to closed loop and zero waste, it's like we have all this plastic that we've created, we might as well turn it into something. So it's pretty easy to justify using recycled synthetics, um, actually. And so let's see, other materials, uh, Tencel, um, Irish linen, all linen from Ireland is eco and ethically certified. They have purity laws around linen like Germany does around beer. And so there's this uh, sort of golden standard of Irish linens. I'm, I'm wearing it right now, um, really love it. And I really try to lean into undyed textiles as well. Um, I started, I pivoted to making masks during COVID. And so that was a really interesting uh, discovery process of what fabric is gonna actually, again, be skincare against the face. And so undyed textiles um, and textiles like milk that may actually have not only antimicrobial properties, but real skin benefits like calcifying and um, wicking and yeah, ant antimicrobial as well. And for those that never touched milk fabric, how does it feel like? <laughs> I'll show you an example real quick, just since we're in my studio. Pull one real quick. That's a very fascinating uh, that we can make materials from so many different... Um, it is. So the product. hand is somewhere in between cotton and silk, um, as well as the durability. It's machine washable um, and it, it just feels excellent against the skin. And so um, I have this conversation a lot about, you know, veganism and fashion and I'm a vegetarian in my life. Um, and so, you know, the milk fabric, it's not vegan, but it is zero waste. And so I think that in sustainability, there's a ton of gray area to lean into. Um, because if, when we talk about vegan fashion, there is a lot of greenwashing that comes along with that term that basically is a, a green light for synthetics. And so I, I really try to, again, part of my pillar is just, is plastic free. Um, that's a message that I got pretty early on, on my path was, um, you know, this, this sort of vendetta against plastic. Um, and so I know it's pretty extreme, but I, I enjoy using such a robust filter because um, especially in fashion, there's just so many options. And so I really think that having these filters as brands and as consumers really helps us narrow down uh, what we believe in and what we're gonna create. Yeah, that's beautifully said. Okay, very interesting. Um, I also, um, I touched once uh, cactus leather. It's pretty fascinating. Like it's, you can't really say. <laughs> yeah, like the same with apple leather and it's fascinating, yeah, how many products we can actually use. And of course, I agree with you no matter, even if it's not 100% uh, uh, ve uh, vegan yet, we still should use this if we have an opportunity because it's anyway better than most of the other fabrics that we can see in shopping malls right now, yeah. All right, interesting. And um, 
let's also talk about sustainable fashion yeah and because i'm really curious uh, how did you discover sustainable fashion and why is sustainability at the forefront of your brand let's start with you aria uh sure it's um it's really part of my core values as a person and so again going back to corporate fashion i was just so disenchanted by the ethics um by the single bottom line approach um and just seeing the amount of waste that was created and um how many seasons we were churning out every every year um i just i had i had to sort of get away from it it felt like doing the splits between my values and my career path and so um it's really just been about integrating these values that i grew up with as a child and that i have continued to maintain and and reaffirm as i've uh, grown as a human and as a a business owner as well um yeah it's just it really it really is very personal for me the, this business and so i am very much informed by uh, my, my personal values. How about you, Maya? How did you discover sustainable fashion and why did you decide to make your label sustainable? Um, I think that one of the difference between the two brands is that kind of Ariel kind of came to it with that's her mission and I kind of discovered it and learned about this whole world through experience of work so the first collection of Marais was not sustainable and then the second collection of Marais I kind of was starting to think about it and to understand this fashion industry because I got into this business at such a young age and I didn't realize the amount of waste the amount of animal cruelty um, workplaces not treated good there's so much aspect that I, it took me one season to understand. And when I understood, I understood um, the, just the shocking of what's going on. It was kind of a shock. And I discovered, it all started for me when I discovered Full Fair. And I discovered this beautiful technology of this full fair and I was imagining how can I do something very strong with it that will actually make customers that used to buy in, and still buy in real fair to change to change their mindset and say okay I love the look of it but I, I can ex exchange that with something that is zero animal cruelty recycled good for the environment good quality so this is how i kind of that was my opening door to this world of sustainability and zero animal quality which became my number one goal in the brand from the second collection till now um almost four years after so for me that's how i really started and then it's as I said, it just opened a huge door for so many other designs and materials that I work with. And I completely changed the factories that I work with and the people that I work with and the whole, my whole world, my personal life kind of really changed from that realization and my business life. Um, really everything, the way I dress, what I'm looking for, what what's inspiring me, inspiring me, what I want for the Marais customers, like it all really changed very fast for me. Nice, thank you. So basically, sustainable fashion is not only about some freaky, interesting materials, right? So much more than that. There are values, there are ideas with think about waste, we think about how long um, this clothes will last, right? And uh, all the, what dyes we use for materials because uh, the dyes that mostly used in clothing from fast fashion, for example, for fast fashion, they use uh, petroleum-based uh, dyes and that's not good for 
anyone again, right? Not good for human skin, it's not good for our planet because it's very wasteful. So all these little things and then you also ending with uh, even with people who you work, where you source your materials. So it's a very complex um, uh, fashion. Yeah, it's not your ordinary, uh, I just made a t-shirt <laughs> and I'm gonna sell it as a merch. Yeah, so it's much more, you put much more thought into it. And uh, we have uh, actually a question from uh, Facebook and they ask us, what makes an outfit sustainable? Maya, can you let us know? What do you think? What uh, makes an outfit sustainable? Yes, um, sure. First of all, though, I think what's interesting about sustainability is it's, it's such a new kind of way of life in fashion. It was not really existing a few years ago the, the same way as it now. So I think for people that are looking for sustainable clothes, there's many ways how to look at it and how to purchase and shop it. I think I would describe it um, kind of the values of the brands you're, you're going to buy it from, what are they stand for, which factories they work with, which materials do they work with, is, there, is it recycled materials, is it, is it vegan, is it cruelty free, is it, there's, there's few sub, like, subjects that you can kind of look at when when you when you find a brand that you love and you wanna purge from them, and I also believe that you should purge um, something that something that will that you understand that, a, that the quality is really good and that it can stay with you for a really long time. I think that's a mission for how to buy something and not to buy something trendy that you will want to wear for one event or one season or a few months. And that's all you need. I think sustainable clothes is to think about a garment that will really go with you for years and years and years and really thinking about the long term and not just what I want now. Nice. What do you think, Ariel? What I, makes agree. It like yeah, I agree wholeheartedly uh, with, with Maya. Um, it definitely, quality craftsmanship is a huge part of it. When we talk about quality, we can think about things in terms of cost per wear. Um, basically, like chart it out. How many times am I going to use this thing? And so it's pretty easy to justify a price tag. Uh, sustainable fashion can be more expensive, but it's just because it's fair. Fair trade literally just means it's fair, um, which the counter of that is that if it's not fair trade, it's unfair. And so um, ethical labor is also a massive part of that. It's a huge pillar of sustainability because um, in, within the supply chain, if we're not talking about regenerative practices with people, uh, then you know, almost everything else is secondary. So when we click purchase, what does that set in action? Pun intended, what thread do we pull? Um, you know, wh wh what does that mean for on a global level? for people and for materials, for planet, um, ev everything that it sets in action. So it's really, you know, I wish there was some gold standard for consumers, like this is sustainable and this isn't, but there's not. And I, I actually think that that might be a good thing because I think the world that we're moving into is requiring um, the consumer to have responsibility to do the work and understand what it is that they're purchasing, to have more um, awareness about their purchases and where they come from, and to take an interest in it. And you're much more likely to invest in something that um, you're really going to wear for a long time if you understand the story behind it, if you understand that ev everything that went into it. And we sort of move out of the default world of purchasing, which is again why I love the plastic free filter. Go into a grocery store and try to buy plastic free and you'll find out pretty quickly it's pretty hard and so um, having filters like that I also find to be very helpful as a consumer to me plastic is just a big red flag that that uh, you know the brand doesn't necessarily care um, you know specifically in food like things can say organic and fair trade all over the package but then if it's in plastic it's almost like uh, you know it kind of negates all of that for me so find the things that are really important to you is it animal cruelty is it synthetics 
Um, is it ethical labor? And then really stick to that and use that as your, as your breadcrumb to, to find the brands that you really believe in and then be loyal to them. Um, because unlike big corporations, small brands are people. Uh, when we're talking about Marais 1998, it's Maya. Shop Ariel is Ariel. And so, um, you know, supporting people who have a mission and who are working on incentivizing a regenerative supply chain, um, that alone is sustainable. You know, supporting people who are pushing forward Forward sustainable agendas, uh, what, you know, other than corporations who it, it's probably just greenwashing and PR. Um, you know, when we talk about H and M or Zara's sustainable collections, it's very much just to be it's it's woke washing and greenwashing for the most part. Um, and this just in this day and age, sustainability has become very popular. And so there's so many options. There's so many brands. And um, again, it, it does kind of come down to the consumer to vet what that means, but. For, um, you know, for the most part, I also really encourage consumers to read the label on the inside of their clothes like they would a nutrition label. Everything you need to know is there. There are the ingredients. And yet, how often do we do that when we're in a dressing room or when we're shopping online? How often do we flip it to the seam and see what it's made out of and see where it's made? The story of the product is on that label, just like food, just like when we're shopping. So it's really using a lot of our, um, you know, our our consumer habits and, uh, and, and practices that we do elsewhere inside of the wardrobe. I do find the wardrobe to be a big blind spot for even the most conscious consumer. So it's just starting to shine a light in the closet. Um, and yeah, so, so ethical labor, responsible materials, quality craftsmanship, um, transparency, and um, yeah, those are, those are good places to start. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. And I would like to add as well, um, for those that are just starting their journey in sustainable fashion, they shouldn't feel intimidated because yes, you have to learn uh, new things. You have to check a lot of things before you buy. And um, this might feel like a lot to do and most people might give up <laughs> in the very beginning. But I think the, the most sustainable outfit is the one that you already have in your wardrobe this is the most sustainable outfit right so if you have clothes that served you for many many years and you love wearing them over and over again it means you already have sustainable outfits in your wardrobe yeah so those clothes that were bought on impulse and became kind of random and all alone those were probably will not going to make you a sustainable outfit, but you can work with that and you can always find an item that will go with that. And when you go looking for a new item, then it's time to look into sustainable fashion. And here you have also choices, you know, because you can go for vintage item. Yeah, that's already been made. Yeah, that's already sustainable as well. And then you can go for new items. So it depends on you, on your preferences, on your budget. But sustainable fashion is not that scary. It's not that complicated. And most probably, most of you already have a lot of sustainable outfits without you knowing. So you just have to keep going, be a little bit more careful, yeah, and uh, follow uh, more sustainable influencers, bloggers, brands, because we teach you, we let you know the most uh, uh, recent uh, things about uh, that we discover on materials. We see with today we discussed milk fabric, very interesting cactus leather, recycled nylon fofers. You know, so there are a lot of different things, and they are coming all the time. Um, so if you want to keep up with all these things, you should follow more sustainable fashion people yeah because there are a lot of us it's a huge movement we're not scary <laughs> we're very friendly <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, don't be afraid to start your journey in sustainable fashion that's for sure <laughs> and we have a funny question here for ariel <laughs> talking about milk fabric i'm it's a hit <laughs> uh, someone is asking does it smell <laughs> Everyone asks us, it's so funny. Whenever I do pop-ups or shops, everyone, the first thing they do is smell it. No, it does not smell. And no, you cannot put it in your cereal. 
<laughs> okay, nice. All right, but what um, we already know that, of course, sustainable fashion is more expensive. If we talk about new made sustainable fashion, yeah? So it's more expensive. And um, um, you both already explained why, basically, because you use different materials that are more uh, eco-friendly, that were grown in a more organic way, yeah, in a more healthy way for our uh, soil, yeah? Uh, you don't waste you don't um use uh, chemical dyes so all these little things that are very in the end are very complex yeah so that what makes uh, sustainable fashion slightly more expensive but of course we can't say that everyone can afford yeah sustainable fashion and um, what would you advise to buy one item that people could buy uh, from your brands, from sustainable fashion, um, instead, if they decide to give up fast fashion and instead of 10 uh, bad quality items, they can afford only one. What would that be? What do you think? Let's start with Maya. I think, I think that's a really good question and I get asked a lot about this subject of pricing and why is it so expensive and as you said, you explained it really well. Um, I think for Marae, from I would say to invest in one coat that will go with you for every winter. Our coats are very um, thick, so they can make you really, you can be with them in New York City winter easily. You can wear them in the rain. Most for fair, you can wear in rain, they get Wound very very quickly we made sure and worked really hard to avoid that so i would invest in one winter coat that you can have with you to probably every winter if you choose to interesting what about you ariel what is one item that you would advise uh, I think that's a great answer, uh, a coat. And I guess it very much depends on your climate. And I would just recommend choosing something that you're that you fall in love with. Um, you know, look through look through the designer's options and what what it, what do you dream about? What stays with you for a week later? You're just pining after that thing. Um, that's that's really the thing to go for. As far as a, investment piece. And a lot of sustainable designers, including myself, um, produce capsule collections. I really only produce around 11 pieces at a time. And so it's really meant to have one of everything that's going to, I only wear my own clothes. So it's sort of testament to the fact that um, it can do everything. Pieces that can do many, many things are, are a good place to start, whether that's a dress or a pant or a trouser, or a blazer. It's really, you know, about, about what you're into and what you think that you're going to wear all the time um, and maybe go outside of your comfort zone a little bit too that can be fun um, to, to shake it up and to sort of redefine your you know your self-image especially in 2020 like the world is changing and we can definitely start with our self-image I find that that can trigger us into being like oh the world is different now I, I need to be different as well I need to evolve and so choosing something that might be a little bit edgy for you uh, can be a good direction to go in as well I love that I love that. Very nice advice. And I, I actually love that uh, you said that your clothes are mostly um, uh, one color or white. Yeah. So you give uh, your customers uh, power of expression. Yeah. So they can uh, try different combinations. They uh, can um, match because white is very easy to match. Yeah. With any other color. And depending on your mood, you can dress it up, dress it down to create a calm outfit, to create a bright, uh, energetic outfit. And it's very nice. So yes, I agree. You should definitely look for something that you love, that caught your eye, that made your uh, heart uh, race. <laughs> yeah. And uh, something that you can play with for a very long time and i think a coat is also a nice idea um, something that will last you very very long time and keep you warm and chic it's very nice so we also have um a question for maya um people are curious 
about Israel, how sustainable fashion has been perceived and received in Israel. Can you let us know? Yes, of course. I think, um, first of all, Israel is very developing in many technologies. Um, for example, we, to avoid, um, like the process of creating a piece is to mix samples. So we use a technology that avoids um, samples and we just can see it on the computer, see how it looks on the body in different size, play with it. And I think Israel offers a lot of new sustainable technologies that are very interesting. And there's a lot of creative people um, from many industries here that work for sustainable. Uh, movement in fashion I think it's it's starting it's it's new here um, it's not something that was existing um, the last years from what I see and research um, I think there's more awareness to it I think there's more interest in it and I can see that there's more stores that are kind of changing their agenda to sustainability movement so I think it's it's pretty amazing that such a um, new and small country already is developing to this aspect that is so new in the world. So yeah, Israel is, is moving fast in that and it's, it's receiving it very well and it's, I would say it's, it's the beginning. It's very nice to hear. I'm glad because of course uh, we need this movement get global. <laughs> as soon yes. As well. We don't have to call it sustainable fashion. Yeah. Yes. Um, we have another question from the audience, and they are asking, um, in, in your experience, are women or men more conscious about sustainable fashion and fabrics? So um, who is more conscious, basically, women or men? What do you think? In general, not only you, but... Yeah, um, I, I don't have a clear answer to it just because Marais is mostly for women. We created maybe two pieces for men. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it is something I would love to do and I get asked a lot for men. So I can see it from my point of view that my customers and the women I work with. So I... I don't want to answer something that is not. But maybe um, like a surrounding. Yeah. I, 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 for example, I can see my husband that is very careful and he recycled, ev he recycles everything. He buys very conscious. I can see that it's in the conversation with his friends. So I would say I see it in both worlds in my day to day I see it more in women because that's the people I work with directly but I, I, I can see it with both with both yes what do you think? which is amazing Ariel what do you think uh, I agree as well I'm mainly geared towards women I do do some unisex but I have so many men reach out to me and say hey do you have a shopping list where I can also you know make some conscious decisions here and I actually think that um, you know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of options for men in sustainability, except like Patagonia, uh, which is great for, um, you know, athletic and active wear, but it's not so great for dressing up. And so I would love to see more offerings uh, for men because men actually shop very differently than women. They, once they find something they like, they'll buy it in five colors and then, you know, and, and they don't look for the sale necessarily also. Um, I think that that has something to do um, honestly, with a wage gap, like men aren't geared to, to be saving money all the time, but they're just not as into um, or as susceptible to deal culture, which is does undermine uh, sustainable fashion a little bit. So I think that men um, technically could shop very sustainably. And they also, they don't have very extensive wardrobes often. They're used to sort of wearing a uniform in some cases. Um, but I do see like in the zero waste movement, I think women are ahead of the game there because we already are used to carrying bags and men are not. And so, you know, like the reusable totes and carrying a jar with you everywhere and a, a utensil and a straw and a, a napkin and these things like women are much more likely to do this because we're already used to carrying around so much stuff. 
So um, I, I see less men in the zero waste movement, but as far as fashion goes, I think it's fair game for both, uh, for all genders. Yeah, I think so too. In Europe here, um, we have more uh, brands for men's fashion, sustainable men's fashion, but still they are mostly um, casual. So the opportunities, yeah, there are so many opportunities here. And every time I meet a menswear designer, I'm like, please just make something for men. They write me, they ask me where to buy stuff, but I can't tell them because there is no market. The, it's just uh, for, uh, unfortunately now is very, very small and they are ready. They are, they really uh, don't care that much because if we tell them that they can make a difference by buying these jeans instead of these jeans they'll do it they'll be like all right <laughs> you know because they don't uh, have that many feelings attached to the clothing like women yeah they more about practicality okay it's not too long i'll take it <laughs> more easy so we definitely need to grow sustainable fashion into menswear away because they also want and they should they deserve it okay let's uh, also uh, let me check if we have more um uh, questions because i think we can also discuss one more thing about what is the biggest what was the biggest challenge when you were starting your label and is it hard to start your own sustainable label ariel let's start with you yeah it's a good thing i didn't know how hard it was going to be because i definitely probably wouldn't have gotten started it would have been intimidating i, I might have been paralyzed by a uh, by fear or doubt um and so i it's good to just start, you know, while, while you're still sort of naive and you're still inspired and motivated. Um, you know, I, I'm, I am a self-funded designer and so that logistically has been a challenge. Um, I haven't raised capital and it's all just sort of recycles back into the business, sales go back into the, um, reinvested into the business. And so um, that's definitely been a thing. There's not a lot of investment opportunities in fashion. So, um, that's a thing, but all, honestly, I think the biggest challenge in this realm of sustainability is customer conversion. So I spend a ton of my efforts um, in customer and consumer education. I keep an active blog and I'm always doing things like this um, that really help to raise awareness within this realm, um, how, how consumers can uh, be more like citizens and less like blind consumers. Um, and I do think that you know the reason that we're in this situation in fashion and in climate change um, isn't because we're evil. It's just that we're somewhat ignorant to the supply chain. Um, that kind of started in the 90s with fast fashion and we've been, um, you know, deal culture has just been perpetuated. And right now we spend the smallest percentage on clothing in history and on more items than ever. And so once we sort of, um, we, we dispel our, uh, our consumer habits that we were taught, um, you know, in the 90s and, and 2000s, and start to get back to more the way that our grandparents thought. I think that we're we're already more on track for um, for shopping sustainably. Maya, what what do you think? Uh, um, can you, what, what was the biggest challenge? I mean, you started at 17. It probably was uh, very hard. It, it is very, it was very challenging. Um, of course, there's a challenges every day till today. And I think it's a very tough business. And I think from the outside, people think it's so easy and it's beautiful and it's so easy just to create. But it takes so much effort and energy and time and just thinking to create one item and to make sure it's a successful item. And so that's already like a challenge that is always there. I think for me starting that young was the challenge that I had many ideas of how I see fashion from all the young eyes and how I see the fashion industry. And because I worked and I still work with people that are older than me, three times 
the age of me, twice the age of me. So they came, they come from such a tradition and fashion of like doing six collection a year. You can just use this fabric. You need to show that. You need to be here. You need to be presenting like this. There's so many rules. And I, my intuitions from day one was like, I don't want to do stuff in certain ways. And I always got feedbacks from very successful people that are much older than me. You, you can't do that like this, or you can, that's not the right way. And, and I really didn't want to do many stuff that are tra fashion traditional. And so for me, the challenge was to like, listen to my in, inside voice and to understand that I can do it in a different way. And also hearing all of that, no, you can't do it. No, no, no. Like you hear so many no's. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that was a challenge. And luckily, and I'm very happy and grateful for that, that most of the time I did listen to myself and it did bring the brand to still be, to still be, which is a big accomplished. Um, so, yes. Yeah, what an inspiration. It's very, very interesting to hear your inputs. And we know that we are over and we almost, you know, we have to quit. But I have a very good question that I think we should answer. Please, real quick, yeah, real quickly. But it's a very good question. How can we encourage our community to support your efforts? Yeah, so how can we convince our family and friends to support sustainable fashion? What do you think, Maya? Let's finish it up with you. Yes, thank you. Um, I think naturally when you are so passionate about something and you know that's your goal every day, that's what I do when I wake up till I go to sleep when I walk, that's my mission. And, it's naturally bringing the people around me, my closest friends and my family that not necessarily come from that world or don't really interest in fashion and don't really think about what they buy and how they buy and what they, what, what's, how much work is it to have a fashion brand. I think that's only that naturally gives the awareness of that. And I think conversation are very important to talk about it, to explain. Um, even sometimes you, you want to see a friend and you don't want to talk about work, but it's really important just to, to really share what you did today. What are you, what's your goals? And I think naturally for me, that's how I see it. A lot of my close family and friends just discovered this movement in many, many ways, just from seeing and being a part of the behind the scenes and choosing with me and coming with me to trips or coming with me for a meeting about production just to make them involved and show them and i think yeah, yeah. yeah. and what about you ariel what do you think what can we do what, how can we convince our friends and family it definitely comes down to living by example example. And something I hear a lot is, well, my efforts don't make a difference. I'm just one person. Look at what a, a mess this world is. But I always like to remind people that you're not just one person. You're part of a unit. You're part of a family, a community. You might own a business. You're part of a company. Um, and so the changes that you make are going to have ripple effects. Who knows? It's not really up to us to know um, what kind of effect we have on the world. So I just really encourage people to do their best and uh, with every single step, like how can we accept the challenge um, and to, to live and to, to live in these ways with these values. And, and soon you'll know the difference. It might feel nuancy at first to put something sustainable on, but uh, the other day I put on something synthetic and I was like, oh my God, this is growth. Like I couldn't wait to get it off. And so the same way with ethical labor, I swear you can feel the difference when something, um, I always think of the movie, um, 
uh, like water for chocolate. You know, it's in, it's baked into the good, uh, the love, the intention that went into it. And so buy things from people that you believe in. Again, we have these platforms now where you can know who made your clothes. Um, and so, you know, connect back to the origin of how your things are made. And it's such a rewarding process for the consumer as well when you're wearing it. And then you're just more likely to share the story. When someone asks, I love your blazer, you can say, oh my God, the designer is this so-and-so and they do this and it's made here and it's fair trade and it's, you know, this is the material. And so it's just more that person is much more likely to convert to a consumer. I, I have people, even on my most down days, um, you know, I'll, I'll be feeling like, oh, I'm not doing enough. And then someone will ping me and be like, you've inspired me so much. I'm, I'm using less plastic or whatever. And it's like, yeah, we are having an effect and we never know how much of an effect we're having. It's, it's not ours to know. So just keep doing the next right thing all the time. Um, and and it's it's an evolution it's an it's an evolving process and so we think we're you know we're doing enough today and tomorrow add a little bit more on um and and, and don't really see it as a struggle but see it as a, a reward for being a citizen of this planet to get to participate in um in materialism it materialism being uh the the connection the relationship that we have with the materials of this earth that is so true. That is so true. And I also would like to add that you shouldn't feel guilty, you know, or you shouldn't guilt anyone because we all made mistakes. <laughs> we all have unsustainable things in our wardrobes and homes and everything. So feeling guilty about what you bought already um, will not uh, get you anywhere yeah so we forget about all the guilt all that all mistakes we've made and we just try to be better in the future consider our purchases a little bit more careful and also the same attitude towards your friends and family don't don't shame them don't uh, be this person yeah because we all make mistakes and we all started from the same point yeah thank you so much it was very interesting, wonderful to uh, get to know you. Your brand is beautiful. You're doing such a great job. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Nice uh, learning more about your brand, Maya. Keep up the beautiful work. Thank you, Daria, Thank you. as well. Yeah, I just want to. So I just want to wrap up and again thank all of our panelists. Please, um, I believe Ariel in the comments um, both hers and Maya's social media information and also if you check on the embassy we have all of our panelists and moderators social media information please check out their designs and clothes they're all so gorgeous and you're also helping the planet as well um, so thank you all for attending the embassy sustainably uh, sustainability and fashion webinar um, over the next few months, the embassy will be hosting several more webinars focusing on climate change and sustainability. Uh, please make sure to follow our social media pages at Israel in the USA for more information. And our next webinar will actually be this Thursday at 11 a.m. with a team of experts from the United States and Israel answering all your questions about breast cancer and recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we hope to see you all there and thank you all so much and have a great start to your week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. Thank you.